Okay, welcome everybody. Um, so this is our Excel file for our final project. And um, I thought for the final project, um, since it's so much in the news right now, I thought we could um, try and do some simple analytics around the COVID-19 data. So this is uh, kind of a small data set that only has um, dates in it, um, countries and regions and states, and then it has uh, the number of confirmed cases, the number of deaths, and the number of people that um, have recovered, although I think that column um, in most of the data is not very well documented. So um, to begin, you should choose a region that you want to, um, or a state that you want to examine. So I'm going to choose Ontario, Canada. My family has some cabins on a lake up there um, that I've been going to since I was little, so um, I thought I would choose that uh, for personal reasons. And um, so let's go ahead and begin. Remember what we're doing here is we're going to be creating a website that has charts on it. Um, the Excel files is something we're going to use to um, create the charts and do the analytics, but um, we're not going to publish the Excel. So um, I know throughout the year I've been I emphasize formatting and neatness. I might um, not worry about that quite as much on, on this particular video. Um, so to begin with, I'm going to um, temporarily convert my data into a table. And that's just to make it easy to filter um, the um, records that I'm interested in analyzing. So I'm going to click on Insert Table. And notice that I just have one cell selected and it chooses everything surrounding it. And then I'll just click on my province and state. I'll search for Ontario. I'm going to get rid of the select all and select Ontario. So I now have a, um, a much smaller data set with just a handful of records. Um, I don't really want to analyze this in tabular format to do the charts because you notice there, there's all these non-consecutive row numbers here. So I'm just going to take this data and copy it and go to a new worksheet and I'm going to paste the values, paste special values. Notice we lost all of our formatting, so our dates here um, are just numbers. I can easily get them back by um, just changing the format to a short date here. Um, I'm not going to use, everything is already Ontario. Um, I'm not going to use the last update. It's kind of redundant with the, um, the observation date. All the country is Canada, so I'm just going to delete those columns. And I just want to look at my data real quickly. Um, so the, the confirmed cases are cumulative. So you can see by the data runs through the end of April, almost the end of April. And it, um, it begins in January, but notice there's a gap there between February 3rd and March 9th. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete those. You may not, uh, your data may be different for the state that you have. You want to just make sure your data is consecutive and consistent. So I'm going to delete that. Um, it also looks like they initially tracked some recovering. I don't think that on March 22nd, people stopped recovering. Um, so I'm going to say that this column for me, for my data set, is not going to be useful. So I'm going to go ahead and delete. And I'm going to, even though Ontario isn't really useful, I'm going to keep it out there just to remind myself when I have these charts what um, what state I was analyzing. So I'll just leave that out there. And to begin with, I'm going to create some really simple charts. So I'm going to select uh, the date and the number of confirmed cases. And I'm going to insert a line chart. So we're not using pivot charts because this is not a pivot table. This is just regular data. So I'm going to click on insert line or area chart. And this looks a lot like the charts you've seen on TV for um, maybe you've been following the New York updates or on um, 
whatever news channel you watch. So here are dates, and I like to use line charts whenever there's dates on the bottom. Um, you can really see that this um, chart could really be manipulated. So if you make it kind of boxy, then the curve looks very sharp. If you make it long, um, it looks flatter. So you can see how you can kind of uh, manipulate the results um, with different display formats. Anyway, this chart, I'm just going to um, expand the heading so people know what it means. And I'll just call it Ontario COVID-19 confirmed cases. And now I'm going to do something similar for the number of deaths. Apologize if this project seems a little morbid. Um, so once I select the two columns with the observation and the um, deaths, I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. I'm going to create a two line a uh, line chart and I'll try and make it look as similar as possible to the chart above it. But obviously the scale is different. So I'll call this um, chart heading Ontario COVID-19 deaths. Um, so anyway, that ends the, the very first part. Um, so when I when I get finished with this, all the analysis, I'm going to go in and uh, there's different ways to, to save your chart as images, but I'm going to be selecting the, these charts with my um, snipping tool and copying and pasting them or inserting them as an image over on the website that we created in part one. But for now, that's it. I'm going to come back for the next video and we're going to analyze the relationship between these two columns, the confirmed cases and the number of deaths.